The road stretched out before us, a ribbon of black cutting through the darkness of the night. My wife, Emily, and I were on a late night drive, seeking solace in the quiet hum of the engine and the moonlit scenery passing by. The night was peaceful, the stars above twinkling like distant promises. As we drove along the deserted highway, the only sounds were the soft murmur of the radio and the rhythmic thumping of our tires against the asphalt. We chatted about our day, sharing stories and laughter, enveloped in the warmth of the car's interior. Little did we know that this tranquility was about to be shattered by a chilling encounter. I glanced in the rearview mirror, my eyes catching a flicker of movement. At first, I dismissed it as a trick of the mind, a play of shadows. But when I looked again, my heart skipped a beat. A pair of headlights were visible in the distance, steadily gaining on us. I turned to Emily, my unease evident in my voice. Hey, do you see those headlights behind us? She turned her head, squinting through the rear windshield. Yeah, looks like someone's coming up fast. I pressed on the gas, hoping to create some distance between us and the approaching vehicle. Yet, no matter how much I accelerated, the headlights remained eerily close, as if glued to our bumper. Anxiety twisted in my gut, the situation taking a turn from curiosity to concern. What's with this driver? Emily's voice trembled, mirroring my own apprehension. I don't know, I replied, my grip on the steering wheel tightening. Maybe they're in a hurry. But it wasn't the speed that alarmed me, it was the relentless pursuit. My palms were clammy against the leather as I watched the road ahead, the other car's headlights casting long shadows that danced around us like malevolent spirits. As minutes turned into what felt like an eternity, I took a sharp turn onto a side road, hoping to lose our pursuer. To my shock, the old car followed suit, its headlights piercing the night like accusing eyes. Panic surged through me, and my mind raced to make sense of the situation. Why are they following us? Emily's voice wavered with a mixture of fear and confusion. I don't know, but we need to shake them off, I replied, my determination masking the knot of dread in my chest. With my heart pounding, I accelerated again, pushing the car to its limits. The road twisted and turned, the headlights behind us following every curve, unrelenting and unfazed. Emily clutched my arm, her nails digging into my skin as the tension in the car thickened. My mind raced, piecing together fragments of the past. Memories that I had long buried resurfaced, a chilling realization forming in the recesses of my thoughts. The car behind us wasn't just any car, it was the same make and model as the one my parents used to own. The one we were driving the night they died in a tragic accident. I felt a shiver run down my spine, the pieces falling into place like a macabre puzzle. The headlights weren't those of a random driver, they were a manifestation of my guilt and grief, haunting me like specters from my past. Turn back now, a voice seemed to whisper, echoing in my mind. With newfound determination, I veered onto a dirt road, the car's tires skidding as we sped off the asphalt. The old car followed, its headlights cutting through the darkness like an insidious force. As I drove, memories of that fateful night flooded my mind, flashing lights, screeching tires, the smell of burning rubber, all intertwined with the haunting headlights that had chased me then. We can't outrun it, Emily's voice quivered, her face pale in the dim light. I took a deep breath, my knuckles white against the steering wheel. We can't keep running from the past either. As if propelled by an unseen force, I slammed my foot on the brakes, bringing our car to a sudden stop. The old car screeched to a halt behind us, its headlights blazing like furious eyes. The air was thick with tension, the silence punctuated only by the sound of our harsh breathing. And then, the unthinkable happened, the old car's doors creaked open, swinging open with a chilling groan. 
I watched in stunned horror as two shadowy figures emerged, their forms distorted and ethereal. My heart raced as I realized who they were, the apparitions of my parents, forever trapped in the twisted wreckage of their memories. Tears welled in my eyes as I looked at them, my voice a shaky whisper. I'm so sorry. The figures shimmered, their expressions softening as they reached out to me, as if forgiving my guilt. The headlights dimmed, the malevolent aura dissipating into the night. And just like that, they were gone, swallowed by the darkness. Emily and I sat in the car, our breaths ragged and hearts heavy. The weight of the past had been lifted, replaced by a bittersweet sense of closure. The haunting headlights had been a manifestation of my own demons, reminder that I couldn't keep running from the pain. As I started the engine once more, the road ahead seemed clearer, the night less foreboding. With Emily's hand in mine, we continued our journey, the stars above guiding us through the darkness. The night was draped in shadows as I set out on a long drive through the countryside. The glow of my dashboard illuminated the car's interior, casting an eerie glow on the steering wheel. The road stretched out before me like a dark ribbon, promising solitude and reflection. As I drove, the rhythmic hum of the engine and the faint whisper of the wind against the windows provided a sense of calm. I glanced down at my phone, its screen illuminating the silence. Just as I was about to place it in the passenger seat, a notification popped up. My eyebrows furrowed as I read the message, turn back now. The words were stark against the dimly lit screen, a stark contrast to the peaceful atmosphere of the car. I shook my head and chuckled to myself, dismissing the notification as a glitch or perhaps a weird spam message. I pressed the home button, expecting the message to disappear. Instead, it remained stubbornly in view. Odd, I thought, maybe I needed to restart the phone to clear the glitch. I pulled over to the side of the road, turned off the engine, and restarted my phone. The screen blinked to life, and there it was again, turn back now. My brow furrowed. The message seemed almost, ominous. My mind toyed with the idea of heading back, but my rational side dismissed it as pure nonsense. I sighed, placed the phone on the passenger seat, and hit the gas. Miles passed, the landscape shifting around me, but the message on my phone persisted. I tried to concentrate on the road, on the rhythm of the tires against the asphalt, but a growing unease gnawed at the edges of my thoughts. Turn back now. Turn back now. The words echoed in my mind, melding with the rhythm of the road. I felt a sudden urge to comply, a niggling fear that I couldn't shake off. It was as if an invisible hand was tugging at my instincts, urging me to retreat. But I shook my head vehemently, my grip on the steering wheel tightening. This was ridiculous, I couldn't let a mysterious message dictate my actions. As the night wore on, the surroundings began to feel strangely familiar. I passed a row of gnarled trees that looked identical to the ones I had passed a while ago. My heart skipped a beat as I glanced at the road sign up ahead. The same sign. The same distance marker. A cold shiver ran down my spine, and I pressed on the gas, hoping to shake off the strange sense of deja vu. The mile stretched on, but no matter how far I drove, the scenery remained eerily repetitive. I tried to reassure myself that it was simply fatigue playing tricks on my mind, but the unease was undeniable. My palms were clammy on the steering wheel, and my breaths came in shallow bursts. And then, as if to mock my defiance, the message on my phone changed. You can't escape. The words burned into my vision, sending a spike of fear through my veins. Panic surged within me, and I hit the brakes, bringing the car to a screeching halt. I stared at my phone in horror, the words taunting me, 
a cruel reminder that I was trapped in this endless loop. My heart raced, my mind racing to make sense of the impossible situation I found myself in. My rationality was crumbling, and a primal fear gripped me like a vice. I turned the car around, desperate to escape this nightmarish cycle. But no matter which direction I drove, the landscape remained unchanged, the road sign the same, the trees like twisted sentinels of doom. The message on my phone only intensified its grip on my sanity, a relentless reminder that I was trapped. Tears of frustration welled up in my eyes. How was this even possible? Was I losing my mind? My breath came in ragged gasps as I clung to the steering wheel, my knuckles white. The road was no longer a route to freedom, it was a labyrinth of torment. Hours turned into an eternity, my surroundings blurring into a nightmare of repetition. The message on my phone became a relentless chant in my mind, drowning out all reason. You can't escape. You can't escape. In a fit of desperation, I hurled my phone out the window, watching it disappear into the darkness. But even without the phone, the words still echoed in my mind, a haunting refrain. I was trapped, not just on this road, but in my own mind. Exhaustion and terror fused into a potent cocktail, and I felt my resolve waver. Perhaps the message was right. Maybe I couldn't escape. I slumped in my seat, the car's engine humming in the background. The road sign loomed ahead, its letters dancing in my vision. I closed my eyes, giving in to the madness, to the inevitability of the loop. But then, something shifted. A glimmer of light broke through the darkness, and I opened my eyes, squinting against the sudden brilliance. The night sky was giving way to the soft hues of dawn, and as the sun's rays touched the road, something miraculous happened. The road sign changed. The trees transformed. The scenery shifted. The loop was broken. I blinked in disbelief, tears of relief streaming down my face. I was free. The road ahead stretched on, unfamiliar and new. The weight of the repeating message lifted from my mind, replaced by a sense of liberation. I pulled over to the side of the road and stepped out of the car, breathing in the crisp morning air. The world was alive with possibility, the nightmare of repetition left behind in the darkness. As I stood there, basking in the dawn's embrace, I realized that the loop had been a manifestation of my own fears and doubts. It was a reminder that sometimes, the greatest prisons we face are the ones we create in our minds. And now, as the sun rose on a new day, I vowed to embrace the unknown, to forge my own path free from the chains of fear and repetition. The night was a tapestry of darkness, stitched together with the glimmers of distant stars. I found solace in the hum of the engine and the rhythmic purr of the tires against the asphalt. The open road was my refuge, a place where my thoughts could wander, and the weight of the world could be lifted for a while. With my fingers resting lightly on the steering wheel, I reached over to the dashboard and began tuning the radio. The static crackled, a symphony of white noise punctuated by the occasional blip of a distant station. I was in search of a tune, a melody that would complement the solitude of the night. But what I stumbled upon was something far more unsettling. Amidst the hiss of static, a voice emerged, faint and ghostly. My brows furrowed as I focused on the words, struggling to make sense of the eerie cadence that filled the car. It was as if the voice was trapped between dimensions, whispering secrets that were meant to remain hidden. Help, please, don't leave us. The words were punctuated by distressed cries, as if someone was trapped in a realm of despair. My heart quickened, and a shiver ran down my spine. This was no ordinary broadcast. This was a distress call, a cry for help that transcended the boundaries of time and space. 
I adjusted the dial, trying to fine-tune the signal and make sense of the broadcast. The voice continued, a haunting chorus that echoed through the speakers. Lost, can't find, darkness, help. My curiosity morphed into concern. Who could be broadcasting such a distressing message? Was this some sort of prank or a glimpse into a real and desperate situation? I scanned the radio display, searching for any hint of a station or frequency, but there was nothing. Just an endless sea of static and the spectral voice that seemed to tug at my very soul. Driven by a mix of curiosity and a growing sense of responsibility, I continued to adjust the dial, my fingers moving with a sense of urgency. The voice grew clearer, the whispers taking on a more distinct form. It was as if I was piecing together a puzzle of distress, each fragment adding to the chilling narrative. Trapped, in the woods, shadows, closing in. The voice trembled with fear, the words quivering with an emotion that I could feel deep within my bones. There was no doubt now, this was a genuine plea for help. And I couldn't just sit by and let it go unanswered. As the miles passed beneath my car, I continued to search for a way to pinpoint the source of the broadcast. The voice provided cryptic clues, mentions of a forest, shadows, and an overwhelming sense of being trapped. I scanned the landscape around me, trying to make sense of the surroundings. The night was thick with darkness, the trees bordering the road like sentinels of the unknown. And then, in the distance, I saw it, an old, weathered sign, almost obscured by the overgrown vegetation. Shadowwood Forest, the sign read, its letters barely visible in the dim glow of my headlights. My heart raced as I approached the turnoff to Shadowwood Forest. This was the place the voice had spoken of, a place of shadows and desperation. The road was narrow, winding through the trees like a path into the heart of darkness. The voice grew louder, more insistent, guiding me forward with its distressing narrative. I followed the winding road, my headlights piercing the inky blackness ahead. The voice on the radio seemed to be leading me, its words forming a haunting trail through the forest. The trees closed in around me, their branches reaching out like gnarled fingers, and a sense of unease settled in my gut. And then, up ahead, I saw a faint light, flickering like a distant beacon. My heart leaped as I drove toward it, the voice on the radio growing louder with each passing moment. The light revealed an old, dilapidated cabin, its windows shattered, and its walls cloaked in shadows. I parked the car and stepped out, the radio's voice now resonating in the air around me. The cabin seemed to hum with an otherworldly energy, its aura of distress palpable. With cautious steps, I approached the entrance, my heart pounding against my ribcage. The cabin's door creaked open with a spine-chilling groan, revealing a scene of haunting desolation. Broken furniture, shattered glass, and an air of abandonment greeted me. And in the center of the room, an old radio sat, its dial crackling with static. The voice on the radio was now almost deafening, its words clear and urgent. Help, can't escape, trapped, forever. I reached out and turned the radio off, the room plunging into silence. But the voice persisted, no longer confined to the airwaves. It resonated within me, a haunting echo that seemed to bind me to the cabin, to the forest, to the very heart of the distress. As I stood there, a realization washed over me. The voice wasn't just a broadcast, it was a presence, a force that had been trapped in this place, reaching out across dimensions to seek aid. And now, it was a part of me, a connection forged through the ethereal bond of its plea. With a deep breath, I closed my eyes and extended my senses, feeling the weight of the distress that lingered within the cabin's walls. The voice was a plea for release, a cry for freedom that had been unanswered for far too long. And so, in that moment, I made a choice, a choice to become the conduit for that release, 
to channel the voice's energy and set it free. The air around me hummed with energy, and the cabin seemed to vibrate with a newfound life. The voice grew louder, more intense, as if sensing the opportunity for liberation. With a surge of determination, I focused on the voice, on the distress that had become a part of me. And then, with a rush of energy that seemed to transcend time and space, the voice shattered like a prism, its fragments scattering into the night. The cabin trembled, its walls groaning, and then, in an instant, it was engulfed in a blinding light. The force that had held it captive for so long had been released, its energy dissipating into the night like a long-held breath. When the light subsided, the cabin stood empty, its aura of despair replaced by an eerie sense of peace. The forest around it seemed to sigh, as if the weight of the distress had lifted, leaving only a quiet stillness in its wake. I stepped out of the cabin, the cool night air wrapping around me like a comforting embrace. The voice on the radio was gone, its message of distress now a distant memory. And as I walked back to my car, the forest seemed different somehow, less foreboding, more alive with the whisper of secrets. As I drove away from Shadowwood Forest, the radio remained silent, the static now replaced by a gentle melody that echoed in the night. The journey had been more than a mere drive, it had been a dance with the unknown, a testament to the power of connection, and the profound impact that a single, haunting voice could have on a solitary traveler's path.